series on what you should do if you just acquire one of these older Mercedes diesels. Because I've always said over the years, you know, when you get one of these old diesels, the very first thing you want to do is a compression test. Well, today, yes, I have to follow my advice. I have to do a full physical exam on the engine of this 300D before I start doing anything else. Once again, you can't believe all the emails we've gotten over the years. People have put hundreds of dollars in these cars only to find out later on that their engine is worn out. So I'm going to see right now today whether or not this engine has any more life left in it. We already did a few road tests. We did the little blow by cap dance test and things are looking pretty good, but I wasn't too happy about that dirty air filter. So maybe we've got some worn piston rings. In order to do this physical health exam, I call it, I've got everything right here on the bench I'm going to need. You know, I've got the compression tester. I've got the valve adjusting wrenches because you have to adjust the valves. Before you do a compression test, you may not get accurate readings. I got a valve cover gasket. I've got, we've got to pull the injectors. So I've got heat shield washers. I got injector return hose. I've got the in proper socket to remove the fuel injectors. So we're kind of ready to go. After adjusting the valves on this 300D diesel engine, I'm ready to do a compression test. And I've mentioned this in many of my manuals, many of my videos. This is probably the most important thing you should do with one of these old diesels after you acquire it, unless you get it done before you purchase it. Now I've got the compression tester that we sell on my website. This is also included in the physical exam kit. It comes with complete written instructions that I've written. So I won't be going over a lot of step-by-step -step information in this video because I've already written a manual that'll take you through the process of using this compression tester to properly test the engine compression on these old four and five cylinder diesel engines. Now I'm going to share with you a few tips. One right here you're going to see are these clamps on my battery. Yes, that's right. I've got a battery charger on this battery. I'm making sure that the battery has a full charge and I'm going to leave the battery charger running during the compression test. If you don't do that, you can get inaccurate readings, particularly when you get down to the end of number four and number five, if you have a weak battery. So make sure your battery's good, make sure it's fully charged and keep the charger on it during the compression test. The other thing I do when I remove the hard lines, I put lint-free paper towels over those delivery valves on the injection pump. You don't want any junk falling down in those delivery valves. You can have some real problems with your fuel injection system after you complete this compression test. Is this old 300D going to prove to be worthy to keep and fix up? We'll know very soon. Well, the moment of truth has arrived. I've got the compression tester hooked up to number one. We'll leave the battery on charge. I'm gonna go through all five of these with you and you're gonna watch closely and see what kind of compression reading we get. Well, look at that, 420. <laughs> uh, if you've been around diesels, you know that is amazing, particularly not knowing the history of this engine and some of the earlier signs of neglect. I saw this is absolutely amazing, folks, 420 on number one. Let's try number two. All right, we're ready to go on number two. All right, 380. We're going to mark that down and we'll discuss results at the end of this test. Ready on number three. Look at that, about 405. That one also is quite impressive. Okay, number four. <laughs> that looks like about 408, just under 410. Okay, I'm going to cross my fingers. Here goes number five. Well, 
I'll be unbelievable, 410. So I was a little suspicious about four and five, but they proved to be as strong as the other two that were up above over 400. The number two at 380 is something that, you know, I might be a little concerned about. I think I'll test that one more time just to make sure we've got a good reading. For this retest on number two cylinder, I'm going to remove the heat shield washer. You can't believe how many times I've seen people put two of these in there. And that can definitely affect compression readings. I'm going to pull this one out. I'm not going to install a new one, but I've got one out of one of the other cylinders that looks like it's in a lot better condition. So that heat shield washer is going to go in. We'll install the adapter. And when I hook up the fitting here, I'm going to make sure it goes down and seats completely onto that nipple. And then I'll make sure it's not going to come off. All right, let's try it again. Well, look at that improvement. Right up to 400, just slightly over 400 pounds. So that means all five of these cylinders are over 400 pounds. Isn't that amazing? I bet you're all as surprised as I am after having seen that earlier video of the air filter. You would have expected this engine would have been worn out. But once again, remember the cap test and that early startup test was very positive. So I'm really excited about this health exam on this engine. This one looks really good. Now I'm excited about getting to work on this diesel.